Hey everybody and welcome to another Dorico video. This is another part of my page formatting and part formatting series. And this one kind of came as a special request, but it's definitely a part of this process. And that is working with the print menu in Dorico. Now this might seem like a really small thing or a really simple thing, but there are some really powerful features that are part of the print menu itself. So I wanna show you how I might go about actually producing parts both on paper and in PDF format. When we load the print menu, we're met with a couple of very simple options. We can choose on the left which part we want to print or export as a PDF. And then we have our options over here on the right. Down here at the bottom of the page, we have our dialog that'll let us choose things like our page setup. So this is where in the Mac and Windows environment, we can tell the printer exactly what we're doing. Are we printing in landscape? Are we printing in uh, portrait? And what size paper we're gonna be working with. Now this is slightly different than using the page size in Dorico itself because this is what we're communicating to the printer, not just to the computer. You can see here in the dialog, we can choose the options of the landscape and portrait. We can choose our paper sizes and we can choose which printer we'd like to work from. We can also choose scaling. So if we know that our page margins are too close and on our printer we're gonna get clipping, we can go ahead and reduce that a little bit. We also have the print option menu. And what this is, if we click on the print button in the bottom left hand corner, you can see we can choose which printer we're working with. We can choose presets. And this gives us our familiar Mac OS or Windows print dialog where we can tell it to print in color, double siding, and then we can have all of our advanced printer options. A secret feature here though is we can also use this dialog to get to the Mac OS's PDF output. So if you would like to demo your project before you print it to PDF, if you hit the print button, you can go down here under PDF and you can click on the arrow and click on open in preview. And when you open in preview, you can see it'll actually open your document as a PDF so that you can look through and make sure it looks proper before you actually save it out. So after we've selected the score or parts that we want to print, we can come over here to the right to the destinations menu. This one's pretty simple and we have two options. We have printer, which is to physically print the document. And then we have graphics, which is to export PDFs. So under printer, we can choose which printer we'd like to choose, how many copies we need, as well as if we want to collate. Now under job type, you have a couple of different options. The first one is normal, which is just regular printing. It's gonna come out just the way you think it is. And then you have these idea of spreads, which is if you have a printer that can do 11 by 17, this is where it's going to put two pages on one piece of paper. And you can see, as I scroll down, it puts page one and page two onto one piece of paper. You have the two up, and the difference between two up and spread is two up just literally page one on the left, page two on the right, so on and so forth. On spread, it does it like a book because they're assuming that you're gonna kind of fold it. And then finally, we have booklet printing. Now, booklet printing seems crazy because what this does is Dorico will automatically take your music and it'll sort it out so that when you print this, you would literally take all the pages, fold it in half, put a staple in the middle, and it'll start on page one, go through. And that's why page eight and page 15 are on page one because that's gonna be the middle of your book. Now, underneath you have print ranges. When you print all, that means it's gonna print all the pages. When you do pages, that's where we can do page ranges or single pages. And you can do kind of a crazy al amalgamation here. So I could do page one through five and page eight. So when I choose a page range, that would be the first page hyphen the last page. And then I can separate individual pages out by a comma. So now I'm printing page one through five followed by page eight. You can see that I can scroll up and down to verify which pages I'm actually printing. And then finally, we can choose flows. Now again, there's only one flow in this document, but you can see when I chose flow, it actually got rid of my title page because it's not part of the first flow. 
Below that, we have the page setup, which is our page sizes. So we can tell Dorico what the size of paper you want to print on and whether you want it to be landscape or portrait. And then below that, we have the option to fit to paper, which means Dorico is going to ensure that your music fits onto the paper size you chose, as well as you can do a custom scale. So if you know you need it to be at 84%, you can do that. Down here, we also have duplex printing, where you can choose one side only, both sides manually, or both sides automatic, depending on your style of printer. And then finally, on the bottom, we have crop marks, we have borders, date and time, and watermark, if you want to see those things. The watermark works great if you want to do, say, a sample PDF to put on the internet, and you can see here that whatever text I put in my watermark, it will print across the page. The last two options we have is in the bottom right hand corner you have these two buttons, one that says page width and the other one that says whole page. Basically this just means of the available screen real estate, what are we going to view in the viewer here in the middle. On the other option we have the graphics tab. Now on the graphics tab we can choose PDF, Ping, SVG, and TIFF for our various types of output files. Most of us typically use PDF obviously. We can do mono or color. For a PDF, we don't need to choose a resolution, but for the graphic styles like ping, we will input a um, resolution. To be clear, if you're exporting a graphic of a whole page in, say, a ping format, 300 dpi would be gigantic. So keep bear that in mind. 150 dpi is a pretty strong image size, especially when we're working with something this big. We also have file name options here, and there's this little formula here for how you'd like the file names to be, and you can choose which file type we're working with. Down here you see there's all of these different tokens that we can use, and there's the automatic separator that it'll put in. And you can see for me, I put in a formula here that is going to do the project file name, followed by the layout number, and followed by the layout name. And this gives me a Strawberry Fields Forever Big Band, which is the file name, followed by 01. And what I use that is so that it'll be in score order when I'm looking at it on my hard drive, followed by the actual name of the layout. The three dots here just allow us to choose where we would like to save this export onto our hard drive. And just like in the print option, we can choose how we want it to come out. Do we want it to be normal, spread, two up, or do we want it to be the booklet? Now for the PDF export, it's going to read from the document's page size. So in this case, we can't choose a different page size because it's using the one that is created in the layout options in Dorico. And then finally, we have the options, again, for watermarks and all of the other advanced print options. Now, do note, you can actually print and export graphics at the same time in Dorico. So be a little bit careful with how you've selected things. So for example, I have the score checked on graphics, but if I was to click on the Alto Sax part, I could select Printer, and then if I highlight both, you'll see that on the bottom, it now says print and export because it's going to print the alto sax part, but export the score. So if you don't want it to do that kind of thing, what you'll want to do is reselect all of your parts and then go in and select what you want to do, graphic, because now you can see it's only going to choose the export option and not both. Now it is kind of handy that you could do export for some and print for others, but it is worth noting that Dorico will do both unless we tell it otherwise. Now when you have multiple different options going on per between your different parts, that's where you're going to get these asterisks in some of these boxes. And all you need to do is go ahead and just click on how you want it to come out and then Dorico will know, okay, I want everything to now to be these default settings. So I know this was a pretty darn short video, but like I said, it's nice to get a, a feel for how the print menu works, since for a lot of us, this is the last step in our process when we're creating parts and scores. Dorico has some really powerful print tools for sure, 
but sometimes it feels a little bit different because it doesn't take us to the regular print dialog like many other applications, specifically here in the Mac OS system. So when you click the print button in the bottom right hand corner, be aware that it's going to send it directly out to your printer and it won't bring up your familiar Mac OS print dialog after you've hit print. So make sure you have all your settings right before you send it off. Thanks so much for watching. Again, check out my new album, Singularity. It'll be coming out this August. And also check out the rest of the videos in this series. I'm gonna keep adding to this playlist because I think this is some of the most important Dorico stuff. I've been doing a lot of YouTube shorts with some great shortcuts and simple things for Dorico, as well as some other videos on other musical topics. If you're enjoying the content, please like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching.